Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Sana's channel, my name is Shanks and today we're gonna continue with the evil campaign in the Shadow and Flame mod for Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 1.06. And this time actually I wanna use the Isengard army, I wanna level up the Saruman so we can get to see his abilities later on. And we will attack Forts of Isen this time for 50 more command points and 20% more resources. Let's get it started! The fords of Eisen are the only means of crossing this great river, a strategic territory for any who can claim it. Oh yeah, one of my favorite maps. Shadow falls across Rohan. Man shall see we no have dark. Work to do. We have work to do indeed. For we you know, for do. example, we need to level you up, my friend, to level ten for the Red Horns Rev. Okay, let's build some furnaces. We can also get some more units on the field. I'm actually curious, guys, once we are ready to attack um, Minas Tirith, let me know in the comment section down below of this video which oh army God. you would like me to use. If this is gonna be Isengard army or Mordor army. If we need to make it like in the films, it has to be, of course, uh, say it, the Mordor army. Let's use Fireball. Dude, 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 dude. Nice. Leadership is also insane from this guy. 100% damage leadership. Holy guacamole. I want to get him to level 10, but once again, the amount of experience you are able to gain in a campaign, in a mission, is pretty limited. So, he will not be anything higher but level potentially 6, if not level 5, you know? He just got level 5, he was level 4 at the beginning, so I believe... Come, my servants. There has to be a settlement, actually, but I believe this is like a different version of the map for of Eisen for the campaign. A new power is rising. Voice of Saruman. He's also so fast. That's what I like to see. Let's peel back a little bit. You are weak. Fool. These guys are dying very fast. Fireball. Fireball. Sit down. Pew. Nice. Ooh. Okay, where is the ring? Saruman, chill. Oh, there, my friend. So let's build some towers just to feel safe. Better safe than sorry, as you guys know. We need those melee units though, because that's the only way we can kill those buildings fast enough. That's why they are so important for us. The stun landing Huskarls. Uh, okay. So Grima Wormtongue is level 5, but I think... Does he have anything level 10 or something? Nervous Siege? Uh, not really. Level 5 unlocks his uh, Leechcraft, which is like an uh, enemy hero debuff. Uh, he's losing 25% armor, 25% movement speed, which is pretty nice, actually. Remember, you can combine that in the Isengard faction with something like Lourdes, so you can cripple with Lourdes first, and once the crippled region is gone, you can just use... Uh, say it. You can just use the effect from Wormtongue, the Leechcraft. This way, you can slow down the enemy hero even more, so permanent crowd control for the enemy hero, you will not be able to get away from this situation. Boom. I enjoy this on 4K resolution, by the way, guys. It's really fun, especially this mod, because this mod is so much more detailed, you know, in terms of textures. The unit design is awesome. Look at this. It looks amazing. Let's build the outpost here. A new power is rising. Okay, we can just get all the upgrades. Just why not? None shall oppose us. Okay, we can also use the station immediately and also industry immediately to just get some more money or the money faster in this case. Let's build a tower here for the defense and two more furnaces. Okay, by pressing Q on your keyboard, you can select all the units on the map. And when you click one of them and press E, you can select all the units, which are the same, like this Dunlending X-Men, Longbowman, Hort, you know? So we are not lose, uh, we are not using the Urukai Crossbowman combination, we are using the new units, which are normally not existing in Battle for Middle Earth 1. Okay, let's get all the upgrades. We almost have the money for the Forge Blades too, there we go. Now we can capture the settlement, the Lamry Mill, and keep moving on. You know what we can do? We can use Palantir. Just to scout this area. He was not able to purchase this just yet. That's the only base he got. And the good thing is, you are also now able to break through the gate without siege weapons. Because your fire arrow upgraded unit, the flaming arrow volley, is able to target... Um, say it. Also the gate, which makes the siege a bit 
easier and faster and this should also make the games a bit faster because you don't really need to build a siege works and get to the enemy base it can delay a lot you know but that's not necessary anymore especially Saruman can also target the gate with the fireball ability Okay, all the upgrades almost purchased, so we can actually, you know what, we can demolish these two buildings and build now two Uruk pits here. And uh, by the way, some of you guys are uh, telling me in the comment section down below and I was not able to answer these questions because I was on vacation. Why are you combining your units? Um, there are two main reasons why I'm doing that. The first reason is I like it. <laughs> and the other reason is because this way the, un the units are most likely going to survive. Because look at this units now. Yes, I know what you are what you are trying to tell me, that I'm losing damage. I, I know that, I'm fine with that. But this way our arches behind are protected. And the units in the front can tank, the absorb, uh, tank and absorb the incoming damage. And this way our battalions are most likely going to survive way, way longer than when you don't combine them. But just because you guys want to see that, I want to... Wait a second. Let's build some Urukai. I will, I will make some normal units for you guys, just because you guys like to see that. Let's conquer the entire map first of all. I, 50% more damage, Warchan, 50% more damage, Saruman gives you 100% more damage. Just imagine in the late game, once we are ready to attack Minas Tirith, which is gonna be the final mission in the campaign of the evil, for Battle for Middle Earth 1, the Shadow and Flame mod, Imagine the ability, uh, I mean, the damage and armor leadership boost we will, you know, we will be able to unlock. That's gonna be insane, like, every unit of ours is gonna hit like an absolute truck. Fool! Let's build uh, slaughterhouses, why? Because they don't take any command points. Remember those lumber mills? They require lumber mill workers and every single one of these is gonna cost us one command point. Which is gonna be kind of wasted, because we don't really need the money as you can see until. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna sacrifice them. Let's bring them right here. Because I wanna show you guys another different uh, combination possibility. If you want to if you want to be able to not lose any power, but you will only lose movement speed. On the other side, your units are gonna be tankier and they will also hit very hard. Industry is available, let's use it. That's how a level 2 furnace is looking like. I don't know if I actually this if this is actually able to shoot or not. Can tell. But one thing is for sure, the towers they have not enough range in this mod, unlike in normal BFME one, in which the tower is gonna always outrange a normal archer battalion. I believe only Elven warriors uh, and Legolas are able to outrange a tower. Okay, we're gonna sacrifice them, but it looks like this guy doesn't want to come out. Come out and play with me. You know what we can also do? We can use the bloodthirsty. No, that's not possible. Bloodthirsty doesn't exist here. We need to lose this unit. But if he doesn't want to kill us, I'm, I'm fine. Because what you can always do is you can send them into, into the slaughterhouse. This way you can sacrifice them and not only you don't feed your opponent with some power points and experience points for the enemy units or heroes, but also you will get some money. Watch this now. The second they enter the slaughterhouse, watch what's happening. You see? You get some money back. Which is pretty nice for the evil faction. And this way we can extend our command point and uh, get the Uruk pit to level 2. Because I would like to combine the Urukai with the Uruk Spearman. Look our money, dude. We have so much money, we have almost full map control. I believe we have full map control now because there is not a settlement next to this uh, castle. Okay. Nice. So now we're gonna make uh, pikemen. Let's upgrade them all with all the upgrades because we can afford it. New power is rising. Can we use this again? No! Oh, that's... Oh, my bad. I thought this is something like a speechcraft from Saruman as we know from BFME 1. This actually is stealing enemy units. That's what it is. Okay. Alright. So, again, let's combine them. And this way now we have a Uruk... High and Uruk Pikeman Heart. They will have all forge plates and heavy armor, so that's a pretty tanky unit. Again, the only one downside here is that they are very immobile. They are very slow in compared to the normal Urukai, and you are also not able to switch battle formation with the combined units. Like Urukai, for example, they are able to switch to the block formation, 
and the pikemen are able to switch to the porcupine formation that's not possible however if you combine them with each other same goes also to the to the to this units you know you can't uh, use the wedge formation to make the arches deal more damage or the block formation to make the front line a bit more tanky he's actually automatically casting the wizard plus even though i'm not right clicking it i don't know about that but saruman is hitting like a truck as you can see that's what i was trying to say all the time the amount of experience you are able to gain is kind of limited. Okay. These units are pretty dope, but they feel a bit too squishy in my opinion. But I'm fine with that. So we are command points kept. We can oh we can make one more, right? Wait, hold on a second. You know what we're gonna do? When you actually get them on the field at the same time. Maybe they can come out at the same time. Let's see, I wanna try that. Because we can only get one of them at the, uh, on the field by now. But I'm actually curious if you click at, on them at the same time, the building is gonna be the same second, I believe. Oh no. No, 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 no. So, because they are recovering, that's what it is. Let us go now. Let us go now. It's gonna be difficult. You can also kill the units on top of the wall just like that. So, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna use Fireball. You can even attack that without, really? I didn't know that I didn't know that this is possible. Are you gonna deal damage like that to the gate? Let's use War Chant to burst and fire and then target the gate. Should be bursting it. Oh my goodness, what a burst. What a burst, what a burst, what a burst. I'm trying to lose some units. But let's use also Eye of Sauron because it also gives you a more combat experience, which means your units are gonna be able to level up to level up a bit faster, you know? Not a bit double, twice as fast. Which is pretty, pretty good. Many of them are doing absolutely nothing. I'm looking for a juicy Zaplast. Let's go inside the Jeans out of one. But that's gonna be a juicy one, guys. Watch, watch. Ooh, that's what I'm talking about. And yeah, they come out at the same time. And this way we are able to extend our command point limit. Which is pretty dope. Now we have four battalions of this Uruk uh, Pikeman combination. Which means we have a lot of damage now against the enemy structures mainly. But also these units are dealing a lot of damage to the enemy units. Again, the only downside of this battalion is actually the lack of movement speed. That's an Alvin Elias summon. I wish this would be abil uh, this ability would be available. Hey, warm tongue. Don't tank too much, guys. Let's use fireball. Let's fight this Alvin warriors first. Once again, they are kind of annoying because they are able to get invisible around the trees. And our main force is coming. But my lord, there is no such force. Are you sure about that? I love. I like Isengard. I like Isengard. Um, I like Mordor too because, you know, these are two completely different factions, right? The one is... Oh, is he, is he actually rebuying? Yeah, he's rebuying the gate. Okay. Alright, so he's gonna close the gate very soon, I guess. I will I will show you guys these units in action. Hopefully he's not, he's not gonna close the gate, hopefully. And also Warchan is reloading a bit faster. Can we get inside the jeans? Don't close the gate yet. Oh, he has a lot of units inside. Holy moly. Okay, just fight here now. Their damage output is insane. Warchan is way faster. Look how fast it's reloading in compared to the Eye of Sauron. Again, Isengard is known for the, for the strong mobility. If you don't combine your units. And also strong uh, leadership early game. Warchan, you can unlock it with the one power upon you get immediately from the beginning of the game which is the best buff in my opinion in the entire game and the damage output against buildings is gonna be also great because every one of them has forge blades even though i'm not very uh, imp a lot of you know i'm not really impressed about the damage output against the buildings in normal bfme one they do deal way more damage way way more damage but you can see yourself the tankiness is real like they are able to Tank a lot of damage. Kill this guy. There is one guy bullying our army, literally. Okay. Get owned. 
Let's go inside with every single one of them now. We have the entire map. Look our money, guys. Holy moly. We have over 57,000 resources. We also didn't demolish this one. Make sure to demolish the armory immediately the second you capture or purchase all the upgrades you need. Because armory is going to just take a spot from your base, which is kind of wasted. Since you don't need to keep it once you have all the upgrades purchased. Unlike in BFME 2 or Rise of the Witch King, in which you need to keep it. Which makes kind of sense, because in BFME 2 and in the Rise of the Witch King, you have unlimited slots, right? You can build everywhere, pretty much. Let's go for a war chant. A new power is rising. And look at the burst damage once you use the fire flaming arrows. This damage is crazy. Boom, boom. Just like that. And GG, well played, guys. That was a short one. We are really close to Minas City. And that's gonna be... Unbelievable, trust me on that one. If you don't want to miss that, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We are victorious. And again, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, make sure to leave a like on this video. Likes are helping quite a lot. I will see you next time. Until then, keep hitting like a truck and also stay beyond standard. Peace.